Hey, it's Hawkin with Top Don. Today we're going to do a video on battery replacement on BMW F chassis models. Now, maybe you're wondering what is an F chassis model? Uh, so we actually have a model map we're going to show you that we found on turnermotorsport.com on the next slide here uh, that's going to show you all of the F chassis models uh, according to this aftermarket resource. Now, of course, you cannot always live and die by the information you find on Google, but the model map does appear to be fairly accurate. If you want to verify if your vehicle is a F chassis model and whether or not this specific procedure will apply, then you would want to check Parts Link 24 by running your VIN number through there and you'd be able to see. Uh, also, you can use realoem.com and run your VIN through there and you would be able to verify that it is an F chassis vehicle. So, we're going to take you through the steps on the scan tool for what you need to do uh, in battery replacement. But before we go through the scan tool process, we want to show you a couple of tips here and things you need to be aware of before you do that battery replacement. So here is our slide showing you all of the F chassis models that are currently uh, applicable here. Now there are also G chassis models and those come after the F, F chassis in terms of model years. Um, we're not going to show you a uh, overview of the G chassis vehicles at this moment, just the F chassis. So these are basically what you're going to expect uh, this video will apply to as a general statement. So clearly there's a lot of vehicles that this procedure should look very similar, if not the same on. Now the tool we're going to use in the video is the Top Don Phoenix Smart. However, you can use any of the Top Don Professional Series Phoenix tools in order to accomplish this goal. Uh, all of them should have a similar workflow and menus uh, and menu selections will look the same or very similar. So, just a couple of tips we want to talk about when it comes to replacement of batteries. I'm going to move my little icon down to the bottom here. When we are replacing batteries, why are we doing a coating? Well, it's important to do coating because modern vehicles have adaptive charging systems and the adaptive charging system changes the way that it charges the battery based on whether or not the battery is new or used. Uh, in other words, been installed in the vehicle for an extended length of time. The alternator will physically push more current and more voltage to a aged or old battery that has been installed in a vehicle for a longer period of time. If you do not tell the vehicle that the battery has been replaced, it will overcharge a brand new battery in most cases, and this will cause the battery to fail prematurely. So of course, that's why this is extremely crucial that we make sure that we are coding the battery replacement into the vehicle to let the vehicle know that there has been a new battery installed. Now, a couple other things we wanna be aware of here in relation to battery replacement. It's always best that we use an original equipment battery from the dealer if that is possible. If we're not able to use the original equipment battery as a replacement, uh, you can't get to a dealer, maybe you don't have the money to afford an OEM battery, then if we're going to use an aftermarket battery, there's a few considerations we need to be aware of. There are minor differences in the workflow on the scan tool depending on if we're using an OEM or an aftermarket battery. In this video, we are going to show you a aftermarket battery, since that is typically the most common replacement uh, out in the field. Uh, the key points that we want to pay attention to with regards to the battery's characteristics are the amp hours of the battery, and this is something that should either be stamped on the battery or in the product data sheet. If the parts distributor does not have this information, then you would want to choose a different battery one where the documentation is available. We want to make sure that the amp hours match what the original battery was because this is going to affect how the charging management system operates. The battery chemistry is also something we want to consider here. If we are going to install a replacement battery and the original equipment battery was an AGM, we should put an AGM back in the vehicle. It is always best to stick with the same chemistry that the original equipment battery was. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the process with the scan tool so you can see what the workflow looks like. Okay, so now we're going to take you through the scan tool process 
with the battery replacement procedure so that you can see what you need to do with your Topped On Phoenix Series tool in order to tell the vehicle that the battery has been replaced. So when we first start up our tool, we always want to make sure that we're checking for updates at a minimum related to any of the software that we're going to use. So that would be any system updates, any firmware updates, any MDCI or dongle updates, and then of course also uh, vehicle specific software. So since we're doing a BMW, we would want to make sure there are no updates for BMW software before we proceed. Always recommend updating your tool regularly as you will frequently find there are updates for many vehicle softwares which optimize functionality. So we're going to go ahead and proceed from there. We're going to go in and we're going to hit scan. Now remember when we're dealing with the tool we can do either auto scan or scan. Uh, scan just lets you build the vehicle manually and in this case we just opted to use scan. So we're going to go ahead and hit BMW after we hit scan. We're going to hit OK and it's going to give us the reminder that when we're doing an F or G chassis vehicle we want to hardwire the dongle and connect the MDCI unit to the OBD port on the vehicle. So we'll speed through this a little bit here to get you to the menus. Now, before we do anything else, we're going to hit automatically search here. We're going to ID the vehicle using the VIN. Okay, so we're going to do that, and we'll speed you through that process to save you some time. We ID'd the vehicle. We can see it's a BMW X1 in the bottom left corner here, and it is a 2016. Now, here's our full ID screen. Shows us that it is an F48, so again, it's an F chassis vehicle. It's an X-Drive 28i X1 is the specific model. And if we scroll down here, it is a B46 engine, and our production date is, excuse me, November of 2015. So we're going to hit OK or Next. And now it's going to take us to our module topology screen after it talks to all the modules. And builds the module topology screen. So we're on our module topology screen. It's always important to remember that before we proceed with any service on any vehicle, it's extremely wise to do a pre-scan of the vehicle and save that first. So you have a baseline health evaluation of the vehicle. So you can establish if there were problems created by the services you performed, or if those problems pre-existed prior to you touching the vehicle. Now, you have some different scanning options on the bottom right. I always recommend using Smart Scan. Smart Scan is the best option to verify that you are getting all the codes from all the modules. Now, this also presumes that you are using a stable voltage supply charger, like your Top Don T90000 or T30000. Uh, and in the future, there will also be a 120 amp model also. So, we got to make sure we have that hooked up with a stable voltage supply before we do a scan. If your battery voltage falls below 12, it is possible that modules on the bus may go to sleep and you may miss fault codes. So we always want to be sure that we're aware of this. So we're going to do our smart scan and I'm going to speed through this quick so you can see. So here's our smart scan. We can see we have faults in a lot of modules. Now we're going to take you into the vehicle data report to show you what all those fault codes are. So. So now we're on the report and we're going to walk you through just so you can see all the different faults that were stored in this vehicle. It did have a number of fault codes stored, which if you have a vehicle with a 12 volt electrical system problem is not uncommon. You are often going to see a litany of fault codes uh, as a result of low battery voltage. So let's look through at all our faults. It says we have 25 faults stored, which is an awful lot of faults, right? So we're going to scroll through here and you'll be able to see we have under voltage codes, we have implausible fault codes. Now, implausible fault codes could also be, uh, you know, we've got wheel speed status implausible. That could be because we had low battery voltage and a module was not accurately communicating because its battery voltage supply was weak. Uh, that's always a possibility. We've got terminal 15 and terminal 30 issues. Uh, again, all voltage-related fault codes that could be a direct result of a battery problem or a 12-volt electrical system problem. Now, we have two permanent faults. Everything else is an intermittent fault. 
So the permanent faults we might need to be concerned about, it looks like we have two roof faults, but that's not what the customer brought the problem or the vehicle in for. They only brought it in for the battery replacement. So we're just gonna save this data for them and make sure that they have this information so that if there's any questions over whether or not we caused a problem or something of that nature, uh, you know, we have this documentation. So this is before we've performed any services on the vehicle. So we're gonna save that report. We're gonna go back to the main screen now, in order to do the battery replacement coding, we need to go to the special functions menu on the top banner here. So when you are looking for common special functions, this is often where you will find them. You'll be on the module topology screen just like this, and then you're going to see the special function menu at the top. So we're going to click that, and then we're going to take you into where the battery replacement procedure is done. So on this BMW, we have a special functions menu that's kind of split up by subsystem. So we are going to go into body, if I recall correctly here, and we're going to show you where the procedure lies. So we're now in the body menu and we scroll down and we see a section here, register battery exchange. That is the function that we are going to use in order to tell the vehicle that the battery has been replaced. So let's go ahead and get into that menu so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so it talks to the module that's in charge of this function. And here are the menu options that we are presented with. So we can look at when was the battery last replaced. Now, again, this is dependent on whether or not whoever replaced the battery, if it's been replaced, uh, coded that battery replacement. If they did not, then the vehicle would not have any recorded information here. It would simply show that the battery was last replaced at the factory, which would be a zero miles, right? So we can go in here and take a look just to see if there's any data. So let's spool through here real quick and we'll see if we can find out. Okay, so we're gonna look at battery exchange and we're gonna go ahead here and we're gonna hit F1. Okay, so it looks like, number one, our battery was last registered as replaced at zero miles or zero kilometers. The original equipment battery, according to our information here, shows it was an 80 amp hour and AGM battery chemistry. So the replacement battery that we are putting in this vehicle already matches this because we looked up that information and verified with the dealer what the original equipment was. Again, it was an 80 amp hour and it was an AGM chemistry. So we already have an appropriate battery that matches those characteristics. We can look in the vehicle now and see if there is a BMW branded battery in this vehicle. If there is, it's very likely that it is in fact the original equipment battery and this is a 2016 vehicle and we're in 2024. So that means it's an eight year old battery, which is impressive. Uh, if it's been replaced, it may be an aftermarket battery in there and it's possible that it was never coded, which is why our mileage still reads zero. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to tell the vehicle that we are in fact replacing the battery and we're gonna take you into that menu so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so we're going back into the battery exchange here. So now we're going to use F2, which is register battery exchange. Okay, so we have to make sure that we have uh, installed the new battery now. The battery has been fully charged before we carry out this procedure. And when I say charged, I mean bench charged, not charged in the vehicle. And then we need to make sure we have our maintainer. Now, it's also asking us, is the battery the same capacity? Is the battery a higher or lower capacity? And are we changing the chemistry? There's a few other menu options uh, farther down on the F4 there, uh, but you can also see that in this case, we don't need to make any changes. We're using the exact same capacity and we're not changing the chemistry. So F1 is what we are going to select. We're going to tell this it is not a BMW original part because it is an aftermarket battery. Again, we're not gonna show you the procedure for BMW original equipment batteries. The procedure varies a little bit, nothing too severe, but again, we're not gonna cover that in this video. So we're gonna hit no. Now it's going to register the battery exchange in the vehicle. Again, we replace the battery with a matching 
battery, battery chemistry, and matching amp hour rating. So we only had to use function F1. Now it shows that the battery was replaced at 108,800 kilometers. You can do the conversion for mileage, but we can see that it has properly registered the change. So now it knows that the new battery was installed and it is aware that it has to alter its charging management strategy. So we're going to hit continue now. So again, we need to make sure that we fully charge this battery before we installed it. As you can see, it's warning us here that we need to make sure that the battery is at a full state of charge or the vehicle may not function normally. It's going to hit continue. Now it's going to set the date and the time of the vehicle as a service function. Okay, so it's going to record all this and we're going to make sure that everything looks okay here. Okay. Everything is set successfully. And now we have completed the service function. So as you can see, we were able to properly code the battery replacement using the scan tool. We were able to register that it was the same chemistry and the same amp hours as the original equipment battery. And we verified that the module recognized the new mileage of the replacement battery. Uh, so now the computer knows that it has to alter its charging strategy appropriately. So now we can go ahead and take the vehicle for a test drive and verify that there are no faults that return related to any of the voltage or those intermittent faults that we saw in the pre-scan. And then we'll rescan the vehicle one more time, record and save that information, and provide that as documentation to the customer along with the pre-scan. And also, if they want to see a screenshot of this particular information for register battery exchange, we could take a screenshot here and attach that to the repair order as well. So this is uh, the walkthrough basics of how to do the battery replacement coding procedure on an F chassis BMW. Again, you saw at the beginning of our video uh, all of the different possible applicable models that this video will apply to. As always, we really appreciate you taking the time to watch our videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, I'm Hawken, and uh, you know I certainly appreciate your support. If you have ideas or thoughts about videos that you would like to see us produce, by all means, hit us up in the comments and let us know. Uh, otherwise, please like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we'd love to have more subscribers at all times, and uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to watch. So until the next time, we'll see you later.